Hey everyone, I'm Deepak Srivastava. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will learn all about Power Automate HTTP actions. What are the different actions or connectors are available and how and when you should be using them. So stay tuned. As we know, in Power Automate, we can use HTTP connector to connect to an API. As of now, there are multiple HTTP connectors are available in Power Automate. So in this video, I will show you what are these different connectors, how you can use them and when you should use them. So I am on flow.microsoft.com. I'm going to create a sample flow to showcase the different HTTP connectors. So once you are in your flow, click on the news tab. So you can see this window. Now, if I search for HTTP, you will see that a list of different connectors are here. We're going to concentrate on these three, SharePoint, HTTP, and HTTP with Azure AD. Let's take first example of SharePoint. Okay. As we know, SharePoint connectors allow you to uh, perform different operations in the SharePoint scope. Okay. Once I select that, it's going to list down all the different actions are available in Power Automate for us to use if we are working with SharePoint. In this list, there is one thing that you should have noticed is called send an HTTP request to SharePoint. This is an HTTP actions for SharePoint. So when you should be using them? That's the question number one. If you're working on a SharePoint and if you have an operation that you need to perform or automate using the Power Automate flow, and if you don't see that operation or action listed here, so if you don't see that action here, that means there is no direct action available for you to use. You can use the send an HTTP request if that action or operation that you are trying to perform has an REST API. And how you know that? If you go to the Microsoft documentation, and I'm going to share this link. They have listed here the different type of REST based operations that you can perform using REST API. Okay, like for example, this one, right? It's saying list get by title. So this particular API let you get the list information by an API. And there are many. And you can go through this documentation or some other uh, third party website where you can have all the different list of operations those you can perform using REST API. So if your operations or your uh, requirement have the REST API and you don't see that action listed here, that's where you will select the send an HTTP request to SharePoint. Okay. If you are trying to do something outside of SharePoint scope, then this connector will not help you. Now let's take an example of a scenario where this can be useful. So let's say you have a requirement where you want to get all the version of a given SharePoint list item. I know and you know that there is no direct action available in that list of actions under SharePoint that can give me all the version of a particular item. But there is an API for that. Okay, so I'm going to use that API to get the version of a given list item. This action is very straightforward. As you can see here, you need to provide information for these five different parameters. Three are required two are optional, okay? Site address, this is going to be the list of your SharePoint site. Then we have the method. This information you will get to know when you uh, get to know your API that you're trying to use. Like here in the documentation, you can see the first thing that listed here is the method. So some of them are get, some of them are post, okay? So this will give you the idea or information about the type of API that you are trying to use. In my case, I know it's going to be the get because I'm trying to get all the version from a, for a SharePoint list item. In the URI section, this is where you need to provide the URL or the endpoint of your API. And they have an example. So it should be starting from underscore API. So that's your starting point and then your other API detail. So in my case, this is the API or URL that's going to give me all the version of the given item from this work progress tracker list. Okay. And the API is pretty straightforward underscore API web list 
get by title. This is the title of my SharePoint list work progress tracker. Then we have items. Then you need to pass the ID of the item for which you are trying to get version of and the versions. Then the header again, I need to add the header. If you know what header you need to provide, you can just copy paste. So this is the header accept application JSON or data or was and that's it. I don't need to provide any body information. Generally body information you need to provide when you are using the post method when you're trying to create something. Okay. Let's save this and I'm going to test it. Okay. So flow completed successfully. And if I go here and if I look at the response and if you look at the response, it's coming as a JSON format. Most of the HTTP call that you're going to make is going to give you a JSON response. And if you look at these results, you will see this two information version label. So this is the version number 10. Okay. And is, is it the current version? Yes, this is true. So if you use, if you don't use HTTP and if you just use get item, this particular item you will get, but because we use the REST API and we are using the version API, I am getting other version also. So this is the nine, right? And if I keep going, as you can see here, it responded me with all the different version of this particular item. So this way you can do this is one example. This is the way you can use the API and make the call and get the response. And then of course, after that, you can perform your desired uh, further operations. This action or this connector is pretty straightforward. The only thing that you need to get to know is the URL or the endpoint for your REST API for the SharePoint and type of method. And if there is a header and body is applicable to that particular operation or not. Okay. But again, remember one thing, this is only for SharePoint. Okay. Now let's take another example. What if you want to make a call that is not SharePoint? So let's say you want to make a call to uh, Microsoft Planner and get all of your tasks. Okay, again, it's still Microsoft product, but it is not SharePoint. Can I use send an HTTP request to SharePoint? No, you cannot. So if I search for HTTP again, you see there is two. There are two HTTP connectors listed here. One is saying HTTP, and another saying HTTP with Azure AD. Let's select HTTP with Azure AD. Now this connector, as you can see in the name, it's saying HTTP with Azure AD. What does that mean? That means if you're trying to make an HTTP call where authentication is Azure Active Directory that apply to any of the Office product or Microsoft product, like for example, if you want to connect to an Outlook, Microsoft Planner, Microsoft Teams, anything that is fall under Azure Active Directory, this is the connector that you should be using. Because the benefit of this, if you use this, it's automatically going to authenticate. So you don't need to worry about creating that authentication token and working extra step to authenticate the users. Most applicable scenario for HTTP with Azure AD is the Graph API. And if you are aware of Graph API, great. If you're not, if you go to developer.microsoft.com and Graph Graph Explorer, and if you logged in with your Active Directory account, you will end up to the screen where you can test and see the different Graph API. Those are available for you to use. Graph API is nothing but it connect all the different Microsoft product together. And just using one API, you can get all the information as you can see from the left hand side. These are the different operations that you can get. And if you go to the Microsoft Graph API ref reference link, it's going to list down all the basic operation that you can perform using Graph API. So if you have a requirement that fall under any of these listed operations here on the left hand panel, there is a Graph API available for that. And you can use that Graph API in this connector. Okay. So the method or the action that we're going to use is invoke an HTTP. Again, once you select, it has the four parameter now. You need to provide two are required and two are optional. Method, as we know, if I go to the Graph Explorer, 
And if I select any of these different operations, so for example, let's say I want the planner and get all my planner tasks. If I select that particular operation, this graph explorer giving me all the information about this particular API. Method is get, this is the URL. And then again, if I have any request header, it's gonna list it here and other detail. Okay, body also if it is applied. So you can find out the method from the graph documentation or graph explorer. Then is the URL of the request. Okay, so if I go back to my graph explorer, I'm gonna just copy this URL from here and paste it here. Okay, the method type, I know it's get. And as of now, there is no header requirement, so I'm gonna leave it blank. Click save and run this. Okay, so flow got completed successfully. And if you look at this API, and if you look at the response here, it responded with all of my different planner tasks. As I said, it's a JSON response. You can process it and use it in your further actions in, that you have in your flow. Again, this invoke and HTTP request with Azure AD is pretty straightforward, as I said. You don't need to worry too much about. You just need to go to your Graph Explorer get the information about the method type, the URL, and if there's any request header and body apply. So for example, I can show you if you use the create plan using Graph API, then you have the request body. You have the header. So you need to just copy this information and use it in your flow, okay? There's one more point uh, that I know. If you get an error while you are calling this invoke and HTTP, click on these three dots click on the add new connection. And here, what you can do, you can just provide graph.microsoft.com in both base resource URL and Azure AD resource and sign in. Okay, so we understand that if, if I'm working on the SharePoint HTTP, I can use the send an HTTP request to SharePoint. If I'm working on any other Microsoft product, I can use HTTP with Azure AD. What about the third party API? So let's say you are you have a requirement where you are trying to make a call to an API that is not Microsoft product. In that scenario, if I, if I click on the news tab and I search for HTTP, then you have this HTTP connector, okay? I'm gonna select the HTTP action from here. And this is where you can connect to any API, okay? Now remember one thing. This HTTP are gonna allow me to connect to the SharePoint API. It's gonna allow me to an API that is Microsoft, so Graph API and any third party. So this one connector can do all three. But the challenge is if you are using this to connect to SharePoint or Graph API, then you need to work on the authentication also. Okay, so that's the key. You can still use it, but then you need to work on the authentication. That is a little bit more complex because you need to go to the portal.azure.com, register your application. So try to avoid, if you know that you're, you are using Graph API or SharePoint, you already have those two different connectors that, that you can use much more easily, okay? Okay, so let's say you have a third-party API that you, like, that you would like to use in your Graph, how you can use it. Same scenario as we have seen in other, you need to provide these different information. Three are required, method, the URI, authentication. Others are optional, depend on the type of method you have to provide them, okay? So for this example, I'm gonna use a simple API. Okay, so I have this simple API. It's an external API to give me the stock price for a given stock. Again, uh, in your scenario, you can use the different API provider, but once you use the third party API, you will get all the information that is required here. You will know what method that API is required, what is the URL of that API, header, query, body, all this information you should already have when you are working on the third party API. In my case, the method is get. I have the header information that is, again, the key and other detail. I have the URL. So very simple, uh, I can just start picking up the information. The method is the cat. 
I can copy the URL. Okay, now there is one more point. Uh, again, this is a little complex side of it. So if you have a new URL that, that is using query as a parameter, you can either pass that parameter here or you can actually use this as in query. Okay, so anything that is after question mark, I, either I can pass this as a new URL or I can delete that from here. I can go to the query and just use the, the JSON that has been provided by, by third party API URL. Okay, so both are possible. Again, it depends the type of API that you are using. But if you, if you have an API that is having the query parameter after question mark, everything can go to the query. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. And then I need to copy the header. And as you can see here, I have the header information very straightforward here. So you can just either you can go one by one type in or you can click on this small T here and paste the JSON. Okay, so this is the way you can provide the information. Then we have the authentication. Okay. In my scenario, in this API, the authentication is based on the key. Okay. So if you are using an API that is based out of key authentication, you can select this as none and provide the key as a header. But if you are not using that scenario, then you have these different type of authentication. You can select the basic that is username and password. You can use the client certificate where you need to provide the PFX, the certificate file and the password for that. Then you have Azure Active Directory OAuth. This is where I was talking about. You can use this and provide all of this information or you can use just invoke an HTTP with Azure AD. It will save a lot of time. And then you can use the raw. Raw means you just need to provide the authentication header that I'm already providing on top. Okay, so again, in HTTP, again, this is the most complex HTTP connector, but most of the information that you will rely on the third party API that you are trying to use because that will provide you all this information. I'm going to click save and test. Awesome, flow completed successfully. And if you look at the response, I search for the Microsoft stock price and I get all the information from the API. Awesome, right? So yeah, so this was the quick uh, beginner level introduction of different API. The key is to select the right HTTP connector for right scenario and that's the key. So if you are working on the SharePoint scope, always go with the SharePoint send an HTTP request. If you are working on Microsoft scope, so anything that is available via Graph API or available via AD authentication, use the HTTP with Azure AD. And then if those two scenarios are not true, and if you're trying to get data from outside of uh, Microsoft Graph or uh, any third party API, then you can use the HTTP. Yeah, so that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep watching. Thank you.